found that old trusty vacuum tube, um, because, because these interelectrode distances were so great, uh, old trusty vacuum tube couldn't run, it couldn't operate on frequencies fast enough to deal with radar. Um, and there needed to be another solution, right? Uh, World War II is important for another reason. It's important because before this, you have like, <laughs> <laughs> it's important for another semiconductor related reason, which is uh, before this, if you look at the pictures of these guys, they're like, you know, stately white haired men with goofy mustaches and a top hat who have their gentleman's lab. Uh, and when you get to the 40s, you basically have, like, it's like a Beetle Bailey cartoon, right? Where you have, like, a, you know, cigar chopping general being, like, just do it, egghead. And, like, tons, <laughs> tons of, like, you know, tons of really smart guys who are given these weird deadlines that are, you were basically told that their academic interests are not important, that they need to make a product. Uh, so you have, you have the concept of a research group comes around as opposed to, like, a brilliant weirdo. Uh, and, um, and the concept of result-driven research comes around. Uh, and those things are really, really important post-war. Um, in addition, uh, people are trying to figure out, basically, to radar that was used in, in World War II um, was called S-band radar. And it was about, uh, yeah, a wavelength about 10 centimeters, which translates to about 3 gigahertz uh, of wavelength. It's a really, really fast signal. It's faster than the signals that you use in your computer most of the time, uh, even today. So uh, in order to deal with these signals, you needed technology that could A, transmit this, these radar waves, and B, once you transmitted these radar waves and bounced them off something, you had to have something which could pick them back up again so once they got to back to your, your place where you were transmitting them. those waves from. The, uh, the transmitters were made from a, a real bizarre vacuum tube called a magnetron. Uh, the receivers, we go back to our old friend, the unreliable, weird-ass cat's whisker. Because it turns out that the cat's whisker, although being weird and unreliable, is a really high-frequency device. Uh, because the point at which um, this wire contacts the weird rock, uh, the distance there is really small. It's in microns, as opposed to millimeters, which it would be for this. So the, the theoretical maximum frequency is a lot higher. So in theory, this goofy thing uh, if you could make it so it didn't break when you looked at it funny, we'd be able to interpret radar. Uh, a lot of research went into this, and it was way empirical. It was people being like, I put, I, I put wax on it. Did it work better? No, yes. Like, and it was whole teams of people trying to figure out how to make this thing more reliable and like, be able to go up in a bomber and not break. Uh, and they did. Um, and one of the one of the things that they figured out, along with having multiple people working on things, is that you really need to control your process, right? You can't take any weird rock from the ground. It helps if you use the same weird rock all the time. Uh, <laughs> um, and a lot of ideas of like process control got brought about. Because not only did you have to make this thing, you had to make a lot of them, because they went up in a bunch of different, they went, up, they went out of chips and planes and anti-aircraft guns and all kinds of stuff, uh, which really got blown up, so you needed to make more of them. Uh, anyway, war ends. Um, this is uh, this is where I'm going to turn this thing on. Um, so there's only one photo that I'm, I really, really wanted to show, um, and it's this one. If there's if there's like a Skynet moment in semiconductor history, it, it's in 1947. Like you guys remember? Uh, um, what's up? Nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, like in Challenger 2, where like, there's the part where they find the hand of the T-100, <laughs> and it guarantees that the future will be a certain way, because now Skynet will be. Uh, that happened in 1947. Um, it happened, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it happened at um, Bell Labs in Jersey. Uh, 